Back on the show is Derek Krantz, who's going to be taking on Christopher Anthony coming up here at Rite of Passage 3 on March 16th. D-Rock, what's going on, man? How are you? Doing pretty good. Enjoying the day. Yes, and I know I'm catching you uh, during your lunchtime. Uh, what are you having for lunch today? Oh, I just ate a little bologna sandwich. <laughs> nice. That's awesome, man. Well, I'm sure you are eating a little bit because I see that this fight uh, is actually at 185 pounds at middleweight. Uh, what's sort of the reason for, for moving up to a uh, new weight class? Um, it was a uh, it was a six week notice. Um, I was walking around at two fifteen. Oh wow! And uh, I decided, you know, cut down to one seventy. It was just too much of a too much work. Okay. Way too much work. But is the plan going forward to compete at welterweight, or are you looking at at one eighty five as your new home? No, I'm 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 going to go back to welterweight. But I just you know I want to. I want to make it known that, you know, if, if somebody needs to fill in a fight, I could do it 185 or 170. Okay, good to know. Um, so LFA just had their card on February 16th in Dallas, and I know they've got another one coming up here in March. Uh, did you know about this fight before those matchups were announced? Because i, I got to be honest, I was a little surprised not to see you on either uh, Texas card for LFA. Yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, not really. Um I, I know uh, we've been talking about an upcoming uh, match in the area, but nothing set in stone. Uh, it, it just happened that way. Uh, uh, you know, Amber Bishop and, and the promoters from uh, AKA, you know, they reached out to me before anybody else did. So, you know, first come, first serve. Yeah, especially on the regional scene, you got to take whatever fights are given your way because uh, I know it's difficult to, to get opponents sometimes. Uh, so it's been a while since we've seen you in the cage. Of course, you last fought at, uh, in September at LFA 23 where you lost a uh, split decision to James Nakashima. And, you know, people looking at that fight will, you know, see the loss, but there's a lot more behind the fight than, than I think what people realize if they happen to miss it. Uh, you got poked in the eye a bunch of times and uh, there was, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, sort of controversy, you know, just when it went to the judges' scorecards. First off, were you surprised that they gave the fight to him just with the fact that there was a couple fouls in that one um you know i felt like i didn't do my best um he, he was able to get me out of my game plan i fought pissed off uh i fought with one eye um you know that's why you don't leave it to the judges uh, i mean it's plain and simple that was that was my fault of course i felt like you know i did enough especially with the fouls but i didn't I'm not dwelling on it. You know, right now I'm just going to get a couple more fights and I want to get in there. I want to take his head off. I dare him to defend that belt. Yeah. And, and, you know, I I talked to James, you know, he's, he's obviously a really nice guy, but it seems like he has a habit of doing this in fights. Did you expect this heading into the matchup that, that he would be doing something like this? No, not at all. Uh, honestly, it was, uh, I think it was karma. Um, I, uh, I was uh, watched the fight, and uh, a dude got poked in the eye, and he, you know, he went ranting about it and whining, complaining about it, and you know, I thought to myself, you know, I mean, even if you get poked in the eye, just fight through the damn fight, stop, stop complaining. Sure enough, my next fight, I get stabbed in the eye. Um, doctor told me I almost lost it, actually. Oh, jeez, that's crazy. <clears throat> did did he say anything to you after the fight, or was it just like you guys went your separate ways? Um. No, not really. We we, we went our separate way, separate ways. Uh, I do remember him saying sorry about the eye poke. Okay. Um, but fair enough. Um, let's talk about this fight. Christopher Anthony's got the eight and six record. Uh, how do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? It's a good matchup. I feel like uh, you know I go out there, I can impose my will. You know, fight my fight. Um, you know, eventually. It's going to end up on the ground and, and, you know, just do what I do best there and finish them. Absolutely. And who have been some of your main training partners for this camp helping you get ready for this fight? Uh, you know, uh, I haven't done too much uh, tra- uh, traveling this camp. Um, okay. I'm in the middle of a contract. I'm buying a new house, so oh. I got my, my plate's kind of full right now. And uh, But, you know, I've been steadily training with uh, Longview, you know, Team 515 with Kevin Aguilar, Steve, Brandt, you know, all my coaches, and uh, also Shreveport, Brett Mason, and his crew at Elite Combat. Excellent. Uh, how's Kevin doing? I know he's been sidelined by injury. He's a guy that, I, I'm, you know, a lot of us are expecting to see in the UFC next. What's sort of the latest on him? Uh, he's doing good. Uh, you know, his, uh, his 
uh, he broke in his hand. He had surgery. Uh, that's all completely healed up. He's in the gym, and uh, man, he's 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 working it hard. He's trying to get ready for another another bout. Yeah, I, I think uh, if it's not the UFC next, then obviously he'll have to defend his uh, title because they made an interim fight in the meantime. Uh, T- uh, Ton Lee ended up winning that one. Um, let's talk about you though. Obviously, uh, you know, new weight class. I imagine the weight cut for this a lot easier, not having to cut to one seventy. Uh, I believe so. I'm walking in the right now. I'm two what, two weeks out. You know, a little more than two weeks, two and a half weeks out, and uh, I'm walking around at two, two oh five. Okay. So, I mean, I, I, I've always had the muscle mass. I just, I really have to, I really have to hunker down and and get my diet right when I fight at one seventy. Right. Absolutely. How do you see this fight sort of playing out on March sixteenth? Um, I see coming out. You know, throwing a couple couple punches he's probably going to try to throw some kicks keep the distance and uh i'll close the distance hit him a few times if that doesn't finish him then you know get the takedown and finish him there whether it be tko or submission and what's sort of next for you after this are you just going to kind of see whatever fight sort of comes your way or or you know has your management been in talks with the ufc because you're a guy who's been on sort of the line of the ufc for quite some time yeah um you know uh i always take it one fight at a time uh you know uh, you know, if UFC calls up, you know, I'll, I'll gladly take, you know, take the fight, accept the offer. Um, but right now, I just just need to worry about getting fights and doing what I like to do, punch people in the face. Are you getting any downtime during this training camp? Because I know, uh, obviously, you mentioned, you know, getting the house and everything like that. Are you getting any TV time in, any, any uh, anything like that? Not, not so much. I mean, I, I can fit it in there every now and then, but right now, it's work training and then dealing dealing with the realtors and and lenders and all that what's been more difficult getting this house or trying to get a fight scheduled oh the house oh my god (laughs) oh my god (laughs) uh this is uh i'll tell you what i don't plan on moving for a long time this is bullcrap yeah it it is a process yeah especially yeah for for a house and everything is this your first house that you're buying or is there you already do you already own a house no, it's, it's my first house. I've been oh, renting for nice. all my life. Decided to settle down. Yeah, that's good, man. Um, yeah, well, hopefully that works out, and uh, hopefully this fight is uh, going to be entertaining. It certainly looks that way. It's uh, right of Passage 3 coming up here March 16th. Uh, Derek, it's uh, always good getting a chance to talk to you, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media, and if you got any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours. All right. Um, yeah, you guys can you can find me at D-Rock Trance for the May on uh, Twitter. Um, uh, D Rock Prince on Instagram. Um, you know, I want to thank all my my coaches, uh, Brett Mason, Larry Maxson, uh, James Compton, Brandon Quick, Brett Mason, that whole bunch. Um, you know, without them, I wouldn't be as good as a fighter as I am today. Plus, all my training partners. Um, thank you to. Uh, Patterson Dodge and, you know, and Toyota and also five-star builders for backing me up for all these years. 